Hello and welcome to your new video. My name is Sigi and I'm a Belgian running enthusiast. And in case you're wondering, this video is not sponsored whatsoever. The Saucony Guide 16 was released in February 2023 and it has a stack height of 35mm in the back and 27mm in the forefoot, resulting in an 8mm drop. The shoe weighs 305 grams in my size 46. If you have any experience with the white 16, then you will quickly identify that the basic specifications of both shoes are almost identical. The main difference is that the guide weighs 10 grams more. It's a neutral daily trainer, also suitable for those that are looking for some extra stability and it's meant for running on the road or treadmill. The shoe is suited for your easy pace daily runs up until half a marathon. I would not recommend doing any speed work in these though. For me personally, Personally, the shoe is true to size and the upper does feel a bit warmer when running in some higher temperatures but more on that later on in the video. The outsole and midsole is identical to the Guide 15. There haven't been any changes in that department. It's still an EVA based midsole and yes, that is still the entry level foam from Saucony. It's a bit more firm and you have less responsiveness if you are going to compare it with a Power One Plus TPU midsole foam for example. And yes, an EVA midsole foam is also known to be a little bit less durable than those TPU ones. Furthermore, it also has a Holotech plastic plate for those that need a bit of extra stability. If you tend to have some overpronation, then this will help you definitely. For me personally, the shoe felt great from the first one. I did not notice that I needed any break-in period for these ones. But I do need to mention that the midsole is less resistant to the outside temperatures. So once the temperatures start dropping outside, you will notice that the shoe will be more stiff than you are used to. The outsole is equipped with two different types of rubber. In the forefoot, it's a bit of a softer rubber to give you a better toe-off experience. And in the back, the outsole is more firm to provide you extra stability. This also means that the rubber at the forefoot could be less durable than the one at the back. I did notice that the grip on the guide was a bit better than on the white, probably due to the softer rubber at the forefoot. The outer layer has a lot of ventilation holes, but I do notice a difference if I compare it to the white 16. I've noticed that the ventilation when running in higher temperatures is not so optimal. This is probably due to that the upper itself is a bit thicker if you compare it to the white. But I also do need to mention that the quality of the upper for the guide is also better than on the white. So yeah. It has its pros and its cons, of course. They are definitely not suited for running in the rain. If they get wet, your feet will get soaked and in the end, you will have a feeling that it's a bit mushy inside. And yeah, they also take a while to get dry. The upper itself is not so stretchy, but it is still comfortable. As I mentioned, for me, it's true to size. And even on those longer ones, the upper was and remained comfortable. Around the heel, there is a good amount of padding going on to keep your foot in place. They are also easy to put on. The heel area is also reinforced, which is great because that will give you an extra bit of stability. What I do find strange is that the heel tap itself is more flexible. For a stability shoe, I would have expected that this would have been more firm and also perhaps a bit thicker padded. If you check out the white 16, you will notice that it's a bit more stiff and there is more padding going on. For me personally, the logical thing would have been switch that around. For the rest, it has a gusseted tongue with a good amount of padding. It feels really great and I do notice that the materials used for the tongue on the guide is different than the material that they used for the white. The quality seems better on the guide. And also in terms of breathability, I noticed that the tongue of the guide is better. And since it's a gusseted tongue, it also remains in place. Furthermore, we got the laces. I'm not a big fan of these laces, to be honest. That's just personal preference. I like a bit of a stretch, but these are very stiff. The length is sufficient. That's good. So if you need to do the one or snap, they got you covered. And also the quality is good. I do need to admit that. For the moment, I've already done around 100 kilometers in them. If I check out the outsole, I do see a little bit more wear and tear in the front than in the back. But that is to be expected because the rubber in the front is softer than the one in the back. The exposed midsole still looks great. I was afraid of that, to be honest, because if you can see the midsole, it's pretty exposed. But in the end, it even looks better than on the white. I also have great expectations of the upper. The upper seems to be of a better quality than on the white. There is also a protective line at the forefoot, so that will protect your upper even more. Even if the shoe would get wet frequently, I don't think that will play a big role in the durability of the upper, to be honest. 
And if you look at the laces, for me personally, they seem to be of premium quality. In the end, I'm estimating that the shoe could reach up to seven to 800 kilometers, which is a better expectation than I have for the white 16, which is mainly due to the quality of the upper, the quality of the laces, and the wear and tear that I noticed on the midsole, which is pretty much non-existing. One possible downside could be the rubber, which is used in the outsole at the front, which is more softer. So that could, in the end, be less durable than we expect. But we just need to wait and see. But for the moment, the wear and tear on the front rubber is pretty acceptable for 100 kilometers. To wrap up, the Saucony Guide 16 is a very decent shoe for your easy pace runs up until half a marathon. Also, the weight of the shoe will not pose a risk for those longer ones. It will still remain comfortable. Do take into account that the midsole is a bit more stiff as it is only an EVA based foam. And it's also more stiff in comparison to the white 16, mainly due to the hollow tech plastic plate, which is used in the shoe to give you that extra bit of stability. And also, yes, the shoe is also a bit less responsive. The grip of the shoe is also very good, mainly due to the softer outsole rubber. The upper is also great and comfortable, but as I mentioned previously, I do not recommend in running in warmer temperatures. And yeah, running in the rain is also not really advised, unless if you don't mind the perhaps mushy feeling that you could have. Yeah, baby. The shoe comes in at a retail price of around 150 euros. For me personally, that's a very decent price, especially if you look at the quality of the upper, the laces, the durability of the shoe, and then also the stability features. And if you ask me if I need to choose between the Guide 16 or the White 16, it's a very difficult choice, because both have their pros and their cons but if I really need to select one then it's the Guide 16. Well that's my review for the Saucony Guide 16. If you found the video informative do not forget to like and if you would like to follow other content which I will be posting in the future do not forget to subscribe. Recently I also started developing the website goforward.one. I will be posting blogs, reviews, you name it. If you want to check it out go to the website you can find the link down below and let me know what you think. I thank you all for watching and hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye.